Oh, I have a special little treat for you this week. It's right behind me. <laughs> All right, so this week I want you to meet a Kistradon Contortrix. Yes, this little dude right behind me right here is a... Oh, let me pull that out. That is a... Well, it's not a baby copperhead. It's not a neonate because it is May right now. So, the other camera's running. I'm about, eh, I was about six inches from it. So I'm in arm's reach. So they give birth in late August, early September. And so this one, and they're born at like 20, 24 centimeters around here, which is like seven and a half or nine and a half inches. No, eight, eight to nine and a half inches. And this guy, I'd say, is, I don't know, 11, 11 or so. So yeah, don't try and get too close to a copperhead if you don't know what you're doing. I just wanted to put my hand next to it so you can see the, the size difference. And it twitched a bit, so you have to be careful and go back. So it's not that big, as you can see. just love this species. In Virginia where I'm at there are only three species of snakes that are venomous and this copperhead is one of them and the juveniles are actually more dangerous than the adults. I mean give or take. They're born with fangs and venom and the juveniles are a bit more sporadic with their venom release. They'll inject more, they don't have as much control over it. Adults are more often going to dry bite. Juveniles, they'll release more of their payload, but they still don't produce the quantity that an adult does. Human death rate from a copperhead bite is actually very small. Less than the death rate from the black widow I was petting last month. Either way, it's best to avoid getting bitten from both juveniles and adults. And let's go over some quick ID features of the Eastern Copperhead. Perhaps around here, most people are confusing the Eastern Copperhead with the Northern Water Snake, and that Carolina Wren is very noisy. Uh, Northern Water Snake's not venomous. The three venomous snakes in Virginia all have vertical slits for a pupil, while the other snakes have roundly pupils. The copperhead has a distinct spade-like shape to its head, while the water snake only flattens its head in that shape as a defensive mechanism. Also, the copperheads around here often have a dark spot on the parietal scales atop the head. So there are two of those right there. Immature water snakes can have similar colorations to the copperhead, especially the younger water snakes. But you'll notice the bands on the copperhead get narrower at the dorsum or top side while the water snakes become wider at the dorsum. The Virginia Herpetological Society has a really great, excellent website for local snakes, turtles, frogs, and lizards. And they've done a really good job comparing many species against the eastern copperhead so you can see those differences. So I have linked that below or probably maybe right there. And... I recently became a member of the Virginia Herpetological Society because I found their information credible, easy to use, and I wanted to give back to them a little bit. So if you have an interest in herpetofauna and you live in Virginia, I suggest joining. That is an unendorsed plug. And check out the resource because it's, it's great for anyone that's living on the eastern United States, even central. They've done a really good job. Uh, okay, you're okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Alright, so now I've got, you know, I'm a foot and a half away from this juvenile copperhead and I don't want to get much closer. I don't want to get into its strike range, especially while most of my attention is on the camera right now. But I have to be very careful because I don't really feel like getting bit by a copperhead. But this little guy is pretty chill. If you look at the tail, I got a good shot of it. Young copperheads will have sort of a sulfur tip on their tail, and this, it's kind of hard to tell in the light because he's up on this fern and it's covered, but it's definitely got that tip that is not an adult. And I want to talk about the pit organ. So be, between the eye and the nostril, you'll, you'll be able to notice 
there's another hole there. The pit organ is a bit easier to see on this adult copperhead that I found last year. And that contains a bunch of heat sensing cells that can, they can detect changes in temperature up to a thousandth of a degree Celsius. A thousandth of a degree. I can barely change, I can barely tell when the room I'm in changes a half a degree temperature. So that is just a remarkable uh, product of evolution and that's why pit vipers are some of my my favorites. Un foto para mi? Un foto para mi? Oh, me gusta. Eres bonita. I'm sorry, I just, this is such a beautiful snake. I call her she, but even with adult copperheads, it's pretty much, Im you can't really tell just by their appearance what sex they are. There isn't much sexual dimorphism apparent from their colorations. Uh, there are some sc scutellation differences, as in the scales, I was out here today <laughs> filming a video to show you guys how to tell the sex differences between box turtles, but this is just so much way cooler. If you like this snake video and you want more, then comment below or toss a like on the video. I actually have a lot of good footage. So if you are out looking for copperheads, always be careful. I've already checked the area around here to make sure there are no other uh, copperheads behind me. That's the last thing you want is to get snuck up by another snake. So copperheads in, in the spring and fall are going to be more diurnal. That is, they're going to be out during the day. In, um, you're okay. So when that tongue comes out, that's another way of saying, what's going on? Are you going to eat me? I'm not going to eat you. To finish what I was saying before that snake got a little nervous, copperheads in the summer will become more nocturnal because of the warmer nights as opposed to the spring and fall when they're gonna be getting out more during the day to get some of that sunshine to warm up. So I could handle this creature if I wanted to, but you know, I try not to handle as many animals as I, I can because I kind of feel like a every time I go and grab something and take a measurement or all of that. And this little dude is perched up and having a nice, a nice evening until I came up. Maybe he's curious. Maybe he's having a good time too. Having a good time? Okay. Okay. I gotta go though. Oh, it was a pleasure meeting you. So yesterday was actually when I found that juvenile copperhead. And to top that day off to make it even greater than finding just that beautiful specimen, Koa Nature has its very first parrot patron, Natalie McIntosh. Thank you so much for being the top contributor. And I want to thank you oh so much for helping to spread the knowledge of Be Nature Heroic as well as my other patrons. Thank you for watching. Spread some knowledge. Be Nature Heroic.